Welcome to Printable Science and thanks for joining us. In this video, we'll be providing a step-by-step -step tutorial to show you how you can install OpenSCAD on your Macintosh. So sit back, relax, and don't adjust your internet feed. In some upcoming 3D printing projects, we're going to be using both Inkscape and OpenSCAD to help us create 3D models from 2D artwork. So in order to do that, we have to make sure that we have those two programs installed. There's already a tutorial that uh, we've published, and you can uh, check for that on our channel. This is going to be a relatively short uh, video on how to install OpenSCAD because it's very straightforward, and you shouldn't encounter any problems at all. So even though this vid is going to be pretty boring, at least it's going to be short. Once again, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you just click on out of here if you don't need to install OpenSCAD on your Macintosh. There are other videos around for owners of other operating systems like Windows or Linux. And as with the Inkscape tutorial, if there is enough demand for me to produce an installation video of OpenSCAD for Linux and Windows users, just let me know in the comments. And if there's enough demand, we'll make it happen. OpenSCAD is an open source 3D modeling program, and it has a interface which you either hate or love. It's not particularly popular because you create objects by writing command statements. So unlike, say, Fusion 360, where you have the actual 3D primitives displayed on the screen, in OpenSCAD, you've got to create them, manipulate them, move them, and stuff with explicit commands. The power of OpenSCAD comes from its ability to parameterize all your routines so that you can start out by saying, make all the holes in this object one eighth of an inch in diameter, and then simply by changing a simple line in your program, if you've set the uh, design of uh, the way the code is written properly, you can just change one statement and all the holes will be changed to the new dimension. OpenSCAD is not particularly, well, it's not suited at all to artists or anybody with an artistic bent, and it's more uh, the kind of uh, program that engineers would get excited about. I'm not much of an engineer, but I'm even less an artist, so OpenSCAD provides me with the opportunity to create 3D models of functional objects that uh, I can uh, print off on my 3D printer. And as uh, you'll see in some upcoming videos, it's perfectly suited to two-dimensional to three-dimensional uh, conversion, and uh, we can use that to our advantage when we're creating objects for printing on our machines. Installing OpenSCAD is very straightforward. All you got to do is launch a browser. In this case, I use uh, Safari. And in the uh, address uh, field up at the top, we type in the URL, which is just openscad.org. Do a return on that, and the uh, page comes up, and you click on the downloads, and what appears is uh, the download page. You just click on that link to download the DMG package, which is installed in your downloads folder uh, as it's uh, being uh, downloaded. And uh, when that's all done, you can put Safari away because uh, we don't need that anymore. And then go to our downloads uh, icon in our taskbar, select OpenSCAD uh, DMG, the OS opens it up, puts a puts the DMG file on our desktop and opens up a window with the OpenSCAD program. At this point, we create a new finder window because we want to transfer the OpenSCAD program on the DMG file uh, to our applications folder. We click uh, to get to applications. We click on OpenSCAD and drag it into our applications folder and voila, it's there. Now, we double-click on OpenSCAD to launch it, and what do we encounter? Ah, yes. Telling us that OpenSCAD can't be opened because the identity of the developer cannot be confirmed. Well, 
you're probably familiar with this uh, dialogue and we have the workaround and this is all you have to do. You simply have to option click or alternate click on the OpenSCAD program so that the side menu comes up and explicitly select the open option at the top. Now the, the dialogue that comes up at this point is slightly different than the previous one. It's warning you that uh, the developer cannot be confirmed but having opened it explicitly in the way we did you can see that we have the option to open it anyway and so that's what we click on and that takes care of that dialogue problem which won't appear again as long as you're using this version of OpenSCAD. If you download an upgrade or something of that nature you'll probably have to go through the same process of uh, option clicking the open command in order to explicitly identify that you're okay with the Mac OS running this program. So we come up with this dialog box and uh, we just want to change our preferences just a bit. Now this is optional but I want to save you some grief, at least the grief I encountered and so and to do that we need to open a new document so that in turn we can then access the preferences. Now the first time you open OpenSCAD it may come up with a window like this and you'll see on the top right hand uh, corner of the window or right half, uh, top right half of the window it says customizer. Well that's an option that some people are incredibly fond of but it's not one that we need and it uses up valuable screen space. So the thing to do is to put that away by simply clicking on the X in the top left of that pane. That disappears and we're left with the three windows that we'll be dealing with. On the left is where we enter the program code. On the right is a graphic representation of what the object looks at. And below that is the console where you receive messages from the to tell you how your program has run and sort of give you uh, stats and error messages and things of that nature. But we're going to get into that when we need to in uh, future dialogues. This is just about getting this program properly installed. So now we go to the OpenSCAD menu, we select preferences and once the preferences pane opens up we select the advanced tab and having selected the advanced tab we disable docking of editor and console in different places and I'll tell you why. If that's enabled I find that inadvertently your mouse gets one of the window panes stuck to it and it puts it in a condition where the windows aren't the way you want them and it's incredibly difficult actually to put them back the way you had them. So here's just a bit of advice. Disable that option and you won't encounter that problem. That's all you really need to do and now that uh, we've set the preferences and they're automatically saved we just quit out of OpenSCAD and put away the windows and we're all set to go. Throw out the .dmg file and at this point we can launch OpenSCAD and do what we need to do. In upcoming videos we'll be showing you step by step what you need to do to accomplish the effect that we're trying to achieve and so it should be straightforward. So at least this was a lot shorter than the other install video. You might even say why did I make it? Well that's a good question. Thanks for watching and if you have any comments, concerns or criticisms please leave them in the comment section below. If you want to stay on top of what printable science is up to these days I think you know what you need to do so please don't be a stranger and check out our website at printablescience.com where all the science that fits we print.